So a lot has happened in the last 20-25 years that digital giants, they have completely transmogrified our, our experiences as customers and as employees. As customers, we don't go to blockbuster stores and rent DVDs. We go to Netflix and watch movies of our choice. We don't go to retail stores, but go to Amazon and purchase what we would like to purchase. And there is very, there is very high chance that right now, instead of talking to people in your real life, you are browsing your Facebook feed and trying to fathom what your friends are up to. People often go to Google multiple times every single day to discover the meaning of the things that they don't know about. A lot of scenes as employees also, the way learning and development is organized, the way appraisals are done, and even the way employees interact, all has changed conspicuously due to tech revolution. And these changes in customer experiences and employee experiences, they have brought a shift in the business order and that has led to shift in what creates competitive advantages for the business in today's digital age. The digital giants in themselves, they have been financial success, they have market capitalization of the order of $7.6 trillion and the story from being startups in 1990s to be to becoming digital giants in about two decades it's quite is quite instructive so if you want to build a digital company or if you want to digitize your traditional company or if you are designing products or if you want to be a successful entrepreneur in today's digital age you must understand the new rules of business and before I acquaint you with the new rules of business let us first understand what the term competitive advantage means now the term competitive advantage is it has been part of business lexicon for more than a century whenever the strategists they congregate to devise strategy for a fool they often often focus on the competitive advantages the competitive advantage, the term competitive advantage just refers to a set of factors that allow a particular company to produce goods or services better or more cheaply than its rivals. These factors allow the productive entity to generate more sales or superior margins compared to market rivals. The competitive advantages, they can be attributed to a variety of factors. You could be a company that is producing goods at much lower cost and that could be the source of competitive advantage you could be a big brand that could be the source of competitive advantage you could be producing high quality products and that could be the source of competitive advantage for example apple you could have massive diverse network and that could be the source of competitive advantage for example walmart and, inter and intellectual property is one of the most important sources of competitive advantage in today's age of innovation. And also having a customer service that is, a prom that is prompt, that is responsive, is one of the important sources of competitive advantage in today's customer-centric world. If I, now, if I have to summarize the lesson of this book in one sentence, that one sentence will be that in 2022, the competitive advantage, it accrues to those firms which can innovate to meet the needs of customers. In 60s and 70s and early 80s, it was all about being alpha team, big mama organization, and you held the sway. But in 2022, it is, it is about being nimble, strategic, agile, enough to execute innovations that can meet the needs of customers. This is not to say that the traditional sources of competitive advantages do not matter, but their effect has decreased relative to the new factors that have come to the fore. The digital giants, they have become digital giants by creating new market spaces. They have created end-to-end -end customer experiences. They have focused on end user who is a human customer and they have personalized their offerings to the human customer they have managed their business with the help of platform instead of ledgers they have nurtured value creating ecosystems that fuel their growth and these digital giants they understand that the financial models that give greater returns in the digital age are disparate from the models that gave returns in, in 1960s and 70s and these digital giants, they execute near, near financial models that are suited to digital age. 
these digital giants they've got digital leadership at the helm and that leadership understands the power of technology and uses that power to somehow solve customer pain points and importantly these digital giants they have trained people nurtured cultures and designed work to create social engine that drives innovation with speed now the, the first thing that these digital giants did was that they imagined new markets 10x 100x or 1000x new market generation if you just ponder about netflix netflix is a video on demand streaming service it streams movies or documentaries or tv series to the customers who are located in the distant parts of the world and this market was imagined in early 2000s when internet access was not ubiquitous when the dollar 50 smartphone was not reality in those circumstances read here things thoughts that in future there will be market where the customers will watch video on demand streaming on their mobile devices on their desktops now if you can imagine such markets which right now do not exist if you can think big if you can have that unbounded imagination you hold the competitive advantage and it's very vital to take notice of this thing that in digital age the geographical boundaries does does not matter do not matter you can be a startup based in Latin America but you could be serving customers situated in, in North America, in, in, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, anywhere. So if you want to somehow enjoy competitive advantages in digital age, you have to think about new markets. You have to think beyond the geographical boundaries. In, in, an, in other words, you have to somehow implement a kind of evolution strategy whereby you are thinking about creating new markets and serving customers in distant lands. Man, next, these digital giants, they have created and run customer experiences. If you look at this screenshot, this screenshot shows the customer journey map for a customer who has purchased capacitor from the Amazon.com. Now along the x-axis you will you will see that there are the steps that customer is taking while he is he or she is purchasing capacitor from the Amazon. First of all, the customer will feel the needs for buying the capacitor, then the customer will log in into the custom into, into the website using I password and IT and thereafter the customer will search for the product and thereafter will do the research on the various products that are available and will choose one of the products and thereafter will check out, confirm the order, the shipping details and then the order will be confirmed and thereafter the order will be delivered. And once the order is delivered, the customer might choose to write a review or give feedback. Now, across this customer journey, customer is, is, is completing a particular process, for example, logging, logging into website or doing research, and customer is doing corresponding behaviors, and the customer is also feeling related emotions. If, if customer, when the customer was trying to get this discount, using a promo code and the promo code doesn't work, the customer will have negative emotions at that particular touch point. And if the customer had a great experience while receiving the order, the customer service, the, the delivery was prompt, the customer service executive was polite and sophisticated, the customer will have positive emotions at that particular touch point. Now, these digital giants, they have tried to ensure that the customers are feeling positive emotions across the customer journey. They have tried to focus on improving the customer experience across the customer journey. And another way to expand 
or rather to create end-to-end -end customer experience is to expand the product service portfolio for instance Walmart traditionally has been selling groceries and vegetables in the retail centers but of late they have started providing dental services salons healthcare services financial consultancy services in, in their retail centers so if you can somehow pro provide the customers whatever they need under the one roof that is one way to enhance the customer experience and create top-notch end-to-end customer experience so if you are if you want to build the next digital giant you have to make sure whatever you're doing you are creating top-notch end-to-end customer experiences then the digital giants they have always always picked up their convex links and focus on the customer in the in today's age in 2022 in digital age it is the customer obsession that wins over the competition obsession traditionally the managers they have been they have got that competition obsession and the reason is that in, in 1990s michael potter who is professor at Harvard Business School, he wrote a book called Comparative, Comparative Strategy, and that book was written considering the business scenario of those times, but that book is still being used to teach B-School students. And, and that thinking was also picked up by the uh, partners at the big three firms, and, and this thinking still pervades the ranks of the managers across industries and geographies. But the research has shown that in the digital age, it is the customer obsession that wins. It is not to say that you don't have to smell the room, you don't have to do the competitor analysis, but your primary focus has to be customer. And what and, and the digital giants they've also focused on end user instead of next player in, in value chain. So whenever you are designing your products or services, you must understand that you have to design your products or services keeping the, the, the customer in your mind instead of focusing on the next player in the value chain. The customer is the ultimate source of ideas and that can lead to ease of exponential growth. If you can focus on customer and if you can somehow predict what the customer will want in future, you can allocate resources to those projects which can somehow execute innovations that will produce product or services that will meet the needs of customers in the future and that can somehow fuel exponential growth for you. Next, these digital giants, they have created markets of one, M equals one, where M is the market segment, the ultimate personalization. Traditionally, the businesses, they have, they have focused on marketing their products or services to the customer segments, the set of customers who have got similar characteristics. But these digital giants, they, they, they market their products or services to one particular customer. For example, if you look at the screenshot, the screenshot is taken from Netflix account of a customer and in this in this screenshot you can see that the Netflix is trying to recommend movies to the particular customer depending upon the choices that customer gave while he or she was registering for the, for the account with the Netflix and, and and the kind of browsing history that particular customer has and same is the case with Amazon if you go to Amazon Amazon the 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 goods are the items that are there for for you to purchase they are arranged in a manner which is uniquely designed to suit your preferences whenever you register with amazon you give your preferences and and thereafter whenever you use amazon and you you know browse products or you somehow do some purchasing everything is recorded and the software the platform, the algorithms, they they recommend you products based upon your viewing history or your purchasing history, and and this 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 ultimate personalization is not being implemented only by the digital companies, but the traditional companies such as Starbucks, they are also 
personalizing their offerings. The Starbucks, they offer 170,000 beverage options and if you are one of their customer and if you happen to register your mobile phone with the Starbucks, you will often find whenever you are nearby Starbucks, a message will come, a very personalized personalized message will be sent to you and the message will be like this that you are nearby our store in particular location and you can come and grab a cup of cappuccino and that personalized message is based upon what has been customers preferences in the past what customer eat or drank last time when that customer was at Starbucks Now, in the digital age, it's, it's not the competition between the companies. It's the competition between company and its ecosystem and another company and its ecosystem. It's not Apple versus Microsoft. It's Apple and its ecosystem versus Microsoft and its ecosystem. The digital giants, they have created ecosystems that are exponentially growing, that are multi-dimensional and they have got partners from variety of sectors the partners they can bring data they can bring cutting-edge technology or they can bring financial resources to help the ecosystem grow for example iPhone developers they are important and integral part of Amazon ecosystem of A Apple ecosystem correction and uh, the iPhone, the iPhone, it, it will lose its value for the customer by a great amount if iPhone developers do not develop apps for the customers. And same is the case of Amazon. The sellers on the Amazon platform, they are part of Amazon platform and they provide data to Amazon and that data is being used by Amazon to plan its supply chain, to manage its inventories. Now, if you just reminisce, when Henry Ford would have started Ford Motor Company, he would have hired labor, he would have you know, purchased land, he would have purchased machinery, and when he would have got man money material, he would have started manufacturing cars, and, and thereafter he would have started selling cars and would have started making profits. The digital companies, they are, they, they, they somehow look for different kind of initial investments. The man-money material in the case of digital companies is, is the initial investment that comes in the form of platform building, content creation, customer acquisition. And to be able to spot opportunities that what kind of digital assets have to be created and, and, and whether those assets will be able to give greater returns, financial returns in the future is a new kind of business savviness. And another thing is that unit cost economics in the case of digital companies is, is almost zero. The digital companies, they are executing different kind of financial models and those models, they follow the law of increasing financial returns. Initially, when a digital company is building its digital assets, the, the returns, the financial returns, they are minuscule. But once the threshold is reached, thereafter the returns, they go on increasing exponentially and they continue to rise till the next product or service comes, a new innovation comes and that makes that particular product or service being considered irrelevant. For example, Netflix initially when it was building its platform, it was creating content, initial sort of content, it, it, it did not earn much. But once it had built that platform, it had got that collection of movies on its platform, Thereafter, the cost for Netflix to serve the next set of customers was almost zero. And even today, if, if 
there are new set of customers that are based on, on Mars and somehow the same internet connects the Earth to the Mars. The cost for Netflix to serve those customers will be minuscule, but for the food order company to sell those cars to the customers located on the Mars, the cost involved will be conspicuously bigger. And important strategic difference between the traditional companies and the digital companies is that these digital companies they have focused on the long-term growth. They have focused on executing their three-year, five-year strategic plans. They're not worried about what the Wall Street sees on daily basis. They're not worried about earnings per share. This is not to say that they do not keep a check on the markets, but their primary focus is on executing their long-term strategies. Then, these digital giants, they have manage their business with the help of platform. It's not the ledgers, it's not the human beings that are managing the various tasks associated with the business in the case of digital giants. In the case of digital giants or the digital companies, it's the platform that is doing everything. It's the platform that is managing customers, it is platform that is managing employees, partners, and platform is nothing, it is the set of algorithms that are stitched together to collect and process the data. And the basic theorem on which this, these algorithms work is, 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 is known as Bayes theorem. And according to Bayes theorem, if you know the probabil probability of an occurrence of an event from the past data, and if you integrate new data, you can predict the probability of occurrence of events in the future. And that is, who, that is what these algorith algorithms do. And in today's age, artificial intelligence has become a reality. Machine learning is quite, you know, developed. And these, and, and these, these new, new age technologies, they have impacted the algorithms. They have improved the algorithms. And now algorithms, they can improve their output based upon their experience of doing the test. If you look at this diagram, this diagram shows that that data and analytics platform is being used to manage employees, partners, customers, and Internet of Things. For an illustration, consider Amazon. Now, Amazon is having large number of customers who are located in various geographies, and it is the data and analytics platform that is managing customer interactions, customer accounts, and same platform is managing employees, is rating employees, is, is, is monitoring employees. And the same platform is managing partners, the large number of sellers on the Amazon platform. They are being managed by Amazon with the help of data and analytics platform. The various sellers and the various customers, they are using mobile phones or, or desktops or MacBooks to connect to Amazon platform and that Internet of Things is, is being managed with the help of platform, data and analytics platform. And it is a platform which is help, which is enabling creation of ecosystem. You cannot manage that large number of diverse partners with, with the traditional ledger based management. It is the it is the platform that is enabling the analysis of customer journeys and is helping the Amazon to create end-to-end -end customer experiences. The platform has enabled the Amazon to create new money-making models. Amazon is giving loans to the sellers on the Amazon platform and it is earning from those loans. Amazon is leasing its cloud spaces to the businesses, Amazon Web Services, and that is one of the important sources of revenue for, for Amazon. And <coughs> the data that is available to Amazon is being used to analyze customer behaviors and elicit opportunities for efficiency and growth. The data analytics platform, it analyzes the purchasings made by customers. 
where are various customers located what has been their purchasing history what could be their purchasing what what will be the purchasing pattern in the future and that is being used to manage inventories that is being used to manage supply chains and that is being used to effectuate efficiencies and spot opportunities for growth now if you look at these people these people are digital leaders and these companies they have been lucky that they have got digital leaders at their helm but first of all leadership is very important it is a leadership that breaks or makes organizations and in the case of digital companies the case is same these digital leaders they have have made these digital giants what they are today with with their you know and with their with execution of their vision with you know their leadership of large number of people with with using with with their with their you know imagination using technology to 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 solve customer pain points but the traditional leaders are known for so you know, comparing these two kind of leaders the traditional leaders they are known for managing people well they are known for leading people well they are known for being motivating they are known for being strategic so all those characteristics of traditional leaders they are applicable to these digital leaders but the digital leadership is specifically about certain characteristics and uh, first of that characteristics is 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 called or rather is is cognition skills and mindset to imagine markets that do not yet exist so when i was quoting example of netflix i mentioned that net that read his things he imagined new markets when the dollar 50 smartphone was not reality was when the internet was not ubiquitous so these digital leaders they have got capabilities to and mindsets to imagine markets that do not yet exist and these digital leaders they are willing to take big bets and withstand criticism from the wall street jeff bezos he lost fire phone and that was complete disaster but he he really owned that failure and and, and was worried, was thought, not at all worried about 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 the criticism that came from wall street the digital leaders they have to take big bets and they have been taking big big bets and when you take big bets there are certain failures and when you are trying to do things in your way you will always find people coming from traditional mindsets parrying questions at you criticizing you but these leaders they have got capability and as a digital leader you got you got to have that capability to withstand criticism and and continue taking big bets next defining characteristics of the digital leaders is that they've got ab ability to understand what could be the applications of algorithms what customer pain points can these algorithms solve how can the algorithms and the technology be used to create new age customer experiences how can the algorithms be used to manage diverse partners and create diverse ecosystems these leaders they've got exceptional observational acumen they are skilled at analyzing data and blending intuition with the fact based decision making if you just rely on data you miss on lots of big bets that you might take on intuition but if you only focus on your intuition you will increase the chances of failure or you will enhance the risk associated with your pro projects so these leaders they are would to also at analyzing data which is available in deluge in digital age and they are able to blend their intuition which comes from their experience with the data with with the data analysis and make decisions that are balanced then these leaders they are exceptional at managing people at 
at hiring the right people, people have got digital acumen, they are exceptional at designing organizational structures that are suited for digital companies and digital age. So you as an entrepreneur or you as a leader of a company have to develop these characteristics or these skills. Next is social engine, the culture, the people and the work design. The leaders of these digital companies, they have trained people, they have nurtured cultures and designed work that creates social engine that is suited for flexible innovation at greater speed. Whether it's traditional companies or it's digital companies, the people are the most important resource of a particular company and these digital leaders, they really focus on managing their people really well. And, and to quote certain examples from the practices that these digital giants have been using, I will first focus on the book design. The traditional companies, they are quite heavy in their structures, whereas these digital giants, they are quite lean. For example, the difference between the, the difference in levels between the last mile manager and 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 see you in the case of Walmart is 19 level 19 levels whereas in the case of Amazon the diff, the, the the separation between the CEO and the last file manager is just three four layers so Amazon has got a very lean structure and that is the reason why it has got very low overhead costs they are just about 1.2% 1, 1 of the total revenue of, of Amazon, whereas in the case of many of the governments and the traditional companies, it could be, these costs could be quite huge. And these companies, taking, same, taking another example from Amazon, they, they are managing lots of their projects with the help of autonomous cross-functional teams, which have got members from different departments, a, a member from marketing department, a member from products department, a member from sales department, a member from HR department is, is on the team and that team manages a particular uh, project instead of function based departments taking care of their particular functions. And the advantage of this particular kind of organizational structure is that you are somehow able to get people who gel together and who work together as a team well and, and you can get them to manage innovative projects at faster speed. For example, if you've got a team which is, is producing high quality products but that products are not being marketed by the marketing department then the high quality products that are being produced will be of no use and they will not find footholds in the market. So in, in, in another way these these new structures they are also reducing the bad effects of the tussle between the different departments. Then these digital giants they've got different kind of learning cultures, work cultures. At Amazon there is a famous mantra called Alvis Devon. They, they really feel ask their employees to think as if every day of their work is, is their first day at work. What happens is when you go to a job, you are quite cautious on the day one and as you get acc acclimatized to the company, you get like a disciple. But Amazon tries to make sure that every day for, a, for every employee of theirs is, is, is their first day with the Amazon. Then uh, Microsoft, traditionally it has a, it had a work culture whereby the employees, they really bragged about their expertise. But since 
the coming of Satya Nadella. A lot of scenes and now they have a different kind of culture whereby learning is celebrated. From know it all to learn it all. And this is very vital for a company like Microsoft because Microsoft relies on creating new innovative products. And you can create newer innovative products only when you learn new things. These digital giants, they have got different kind of hiring practices. They look for different kind of people. They look for natural learners, innovators, collaborators who have got this for excellence. Jim Collins in his book, Good to Great, says that whether a particular person is suited for a particular job is, is more about person's innate characteristics and character rather than about person's experiences or skills. And, and these digital giants, they believe in that axiom. 50% of the workforce of these digital giants does not has academic backgrounds in technology. They, they're looking for people who can learn new things. They're looking for people who can innovate. They're looking for people with the thirst for excellence. Then these companies, they are executing that very famous idea from Liz Wiseman's book, Multipliers. They are looking for leaders who are multipliers, not the command and control leaders. The governments and the traditional companies, they have lead, they've got leaders who follow that command and control leadership model whereby they lead teams by virtue of they holding that particular position. But these digital companies, they are hiring multipliers, they are anointing multipliers in leadership positions. And these multipliers, they have got ability to inspire people. They are the people who can, they are the leaders who can bring the best in their teams. They're like flour when you use, you are in the room and you start smelling to stronger. Now, I've just shared the new rules of business and how the digital giants, they have somehow executed the new business model. New, new business rules to become financial success. So we're gonna just look at all those rules and how those rules are playing in the Netflix case. How Netflix is playing the sport of business. So I talked about digital platform based business management. Netflix is streaming movies, is analyzing customer preferences, is performing financial management, the bills that are sent to customers and is reaching employees with the help of platform. Netflix is implementing law of increasing financial returns. As I have already pointed out, the marginal cost of making movies available to new customers is almost zero. The Netflix is personalizing its recommendations to the customers. It is creating markets of one. Algorithms are focusing on creating personalized movie recommendations for every single customer. Netflix imagined new markets. The video on video streaming market was imagined before the broadband was ubiquitous and before the $1.50 smartphone became a reality. Netflix has been creating value creating ecosystems. Initially, it, it partnered with various media houses to to these content. For example, it got offers from NBC Universal, it got friends from Warner Media. And after some time when it realized that various media houses they were gonna break their contracts with the um, with, with the Netflix as they saw that Netflix was capturing audience, they started partner partnering with artists to create content. So they have created an ecosystem that is diverse and that is full of value. Then, as already I have pointed out, read his things, he, had, he has used the power of technology to produce product or service to solve customer pain points 
and, and, and serve societal needs. The customers, they want to somehow be able to watch movies on their devices instead of going to theaters. They want to watch movies of their choice and at time of their choice and Netflix has used the technology to somehow serve that customer need. Then the social engine of Netflix is quite famous in the media. The Netflix culture is quite often used by the media and also in the academic circles it is quite often used to somehow you know teach students. The Netflix, it hires people that have got penchant for learning, it hires innovators, it has, it has creative collaborators and it is using that Liz Wiseman's leadership model whereby the multipliers, not the command and control leaders are put into leadership positions. Now, a lot has changed in the last 20-25 years. These the startups, some of the startups, they have become digital giants, and uh, many of the traditional companies like Walmart, TV Bank, they have digitized themselves. The Walmart it hired Z.com and it used that 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 initial set of paraphernalia to digitize itself and that was the reason why Walmart was able to grow during this uh, recent pandemic. Some, many of the traditional organizations they have they have somehow digitized themselves by somehow improving their processes and incorporating technology for example DBS Bank of Singapore it has, it has digitized itself by incorporating the practices of the digital world. Piyush Gupta, who was the CEO of DBS Bank, he one of in his interviews told that in this, the DBS Bank started thinking itself as a tech company instead of thinking itself as a financial institution and slowly and steadily in a couple of years they were able to digitize themselves. As many smaller companies have come to the fore, many of the startups, these niche startups, they have emerged and they've got potential to turn into unicorns faster than ever. The important point to note over here is that the small companies, the startups, they have got easy access to new age AI softwares and digital technologies. If you have got, a, got an idea and if you want to execute that idea, traditionally for you to execute that idea you needed a huge upfront investment. But now you can purchase digital tools that, that the digital giants use to create their products on pro rata basis. You don't have to make upfront big investments. And in today's age, a lot of lots of ideas they are executed with the help of new age fourth industrial revolution technologies such as artificial intelligence, mass machine learning. Ten years back, you would have to hire artificial intelligence engineers, and then then would, you would have somehow designed models suited to your company or idea, and that would have required huge investment. But now you can look for the startups who are selling pre-devised models of artificial intelligence and you have to find models that are suited to your idea and somehow you can start executing your ideas with the latest technologies at nominal, nominal costs. To summarize, I will say that the companies which can use algorithms and data to create personalized consumer experiences are poised for exponential growth. The companies which can nurture ecosystems, which can execute law of increasing financial returns, the companies which can train people, nurture cultures and design books that create that create social engine, 
that is able to drive innovation at faster speed will reap financial dividends in coming years. These rules of business, they are going to stay for the next 30, 40 years. So if you are planning a company today, if you are designing products, if you are planning a startup, you must understand that these rules, you have to abide by these rules. And if you abide by these rules, you will hold competitive advantage in today's digital age.